So what is the role of AWS in front end and back end? And should you choose one based on what AWS services are available? Are microservices related to front end or back end? The age old debate, front end versus back end. What are these? As well as what is the role of AWS in front end and back end? And which one should you choose? In this lecture, we are going to cover all of that. This will be an exciting lecture. Let's get started. The front end is the part of the website users can see and interact with such as the graphical user interface or GUI and the design, the navigating the menus, texts, images, videos, etc. So front end is the visual aspects of the website that can be seen and experienced by the user. Let's understand with an actual example. Let's say we go to a website such as amazon.com so the way this website is displayed to us, such as this try premium brands for free and then on the top, it shows a little bit of their new show, the font, the way this everything is laid out. If you scroll down, the way it displays the price, the crossed out price and then the discounted price. This is all part of front end. Now let's say you like one of these items such as this screaming goat and you clicked it and let's say it's $8 and then you click add to cart and then you click proceed to checkout. So at this point, amazon.com is going to ask you to log in using your user ID and password. Then if you have a discount code, you can apply the discount code. Then it is gonna ask you for your payment information. Then it is going to run some logic to see if you can actually buy with the payment information you gave, if the credit card is valid, if you gave a debit card, if you have an up debit card balance, etc. All the business logic and flows and conditions, they are not part of front end. They are the back end. So coming back to the slides, so front end is the user interface such as the amazon.com website, the way it's laid out, text messages, etc. The back end has all the business logic, such as if you add something to a shopping cart, you applied some discount, uh, you do the payment processing, etc. And back end interacts with database. So database holds all the information, such as price of an item, uh, the shopping cart information, etc. So how the shopping cart will look like? It will actually be a table in the database with a shopping cart ID, your login, and then the product ID signifying what you are trying to buy. Let's take another example. Let's say you want to buy a car. You go to cars.com and then this is the front end, right? The latest new car releases and expert reviews, etc. So now you want to search for a car. So let's say you want to search cars made by, let's say Honda. Okay, you click search. So as soon as you click search, it will invoke an API and it will go to the back end because remember all the data will, will be stored in the database. So in this case, there is a database with all the cars information, the price, the make, uh, the uh, zip code, where the car is located, etc. So the back end will run this query on this database and send everything back to the front end. So if I click search, the back end runs all that logic, gets the data, send it back to the front end, and then the front end displays the results. So the front end and back end interacts together to create almost all applications. So if we go back to the slides for cars.com, it shows all the cars in the website, but then all the fetching car details based on the user selection is done on the back end, and all the car details are saved on the databases. So why do you need separate front end and back end? Why can't we just create one end which has all the front end and back end logic? It's because most of the times you will make changes either on the business logic or on the front end. If you combine everything, it makes changing of the code and testing very difficult because every time you make a change on the front end, you also have to test the back end because now you have merged front end and back end. Vice versa is also true. Most of the times you make changes on the back end, you add new functionality in some business logic, you also have to test out the whole front end. Another reason is there are separate technology stack for front end and back end. You do not use the same programming language and technology stack and frameworks 
for both front end and back end. So what are some of the tech stack for front end? So for front end, you use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Angular, React, and generally you run your front end on a web server. On the back end, some of the popular programming languages are Python, Java, Node.js, C++, and generally speaking, backend runs in a application server or app server. Also, don't get intimidated by all these names. You do not need to learn everything. So for example, if you are going for backend, you do not need to know Python and Java and Node.js and C++. You just pick one and then you become expert at it. Then you choose a job which uses that language. And once you understand one language, it is easier to learn other languages. The same thing is true for front-end as well. So what are some of the other differences? So front-end is how things look and feel, images, colors, style. The back-end has the business logic and interaction with core database. Now again, these are generally true. This does not mean that front-end cannot use database. You always have to tweak based on your application. There are certain cases where front-end interacts with some sort of caching database directly without going to the backend. But when I say core database, that means the primary database of your application where majority of the data is stored and backend interacts with that database. Frontend has a shorter feedback loop. So for example, if you want to change your web page, which is written in HTML with CSS, you change it, you reload it, and the changes are reflected. So you can change and retest a little bit easier. Backend, since you cannot look and feel the backend, it has a longer feedback loop. If you change some particular business logic, you have to simulate that specific logic. So you have to call the API with certain fields, certain conditions uh, to test it out. Also in certain cases, you put some logic if there are high traffic and people are getting some kind of error, what kind of error message you should return. And to test those out, you need to simulate a high traffic. So it is a little bit difficult to test the backend than it is to test frontend. Now the main question, how much money does frontend give you? So average frontend developer makes $105,000 a year. This is a indeed.com salary data. However, because these days app development is very, very popular, there are more freelancing opportunity for app development for frontend. Frontend is ideal for visual person. So if you're a visual person, you like artistic projects, uh, you like to design how things look and feel, frontend is ideal for you. How much money you get as a backend developer? Average $121,000 a year. Again, these are the average salary data because I have seen backend developer make less than this and I have seen frontend developer make a lot more. It's all about what you are good at. If you like something, if you really like front-end, you can make way more money than this average salary shown. Back-end deals with data structure and algorithm, database interaction, analytics, etc. Back-end is a little bit heavier portion which is taught in the computer science program. It is a misconception if you think front-end is not taught in computer science, but the number of classes for front-end will be much less than the back-end because there is a lot going on with the back-end because backend deals with the business logic and when your application traffic increases, you have to run those business logic for that huge amount of traffic flow. So there is more computation that's required for the backend. So it is very, very important that the backend is optimized. You are implementing the correct data structure and algorithm. Your database queries are tuned, your database is tuned. Uh, so there are a little bit more overhead. So that's why backend engineers get a little bit more. In the parenthesis, I mentioned that no formal degree required for job. Because I talked about what's taught in the computer science courses, so I wanted to make sure that you don't get the idea that if you haven't gone to college for some sort of computer science engineering, you cannot become a front-end or back-end developer. That is not true at all. You can definitely learn both front-end and back-end by yourself. You can get relevant certifications and you will be able to get a job. So what is the role of AWS in front-end and back-end? And should you choose one based on what AWS services are available? AWS offers powerful services for both front-end and back-end. 
So you should not choose front-end or back-end based on whether you are going for AWS career or not. It has no impact whatsoever. For example, one of the most popular and powerful AWS service, Amazon EC2, can run both web server, which is for front-end, as well as app server, which is for back-end. And in addition to that, there are multiple services available for both front-end and back-end. And this is the secret. There are many AWS jobs which does not require either front-end development or back-end development. For example, security engineer, DevOps engineer, infrastructure engineer, infrastructure architect, DevOps architect, etc. Now, a couple of things which are very popular right now, and I get this question. Raj, I want to learn Kubernetes or serverless. Should I learn front-end or back-end? Doesn't matter. Both Kubernetes and serverless can run front-end and back-end. Another question I get is microservices. Are microservices related to front-end or back-end? So microservices means they are APIs and they execute business logic. So microservices are related to back-end. If you want to go for front-end, you do not need to learn microservices. So the final thing is you cannot decide should you go front-end or back-end. So it comes back to what you like. Do you like designing stuff, the look and feel of an application, or do you like to write business logic, data structure, algorithm? Based on that, look and feel, quick feedback loop, goes to front-end, data structure, back-end logic, back-end. Also, learning front-end is a little bit faster because like we discussed, back-end is involved with a lot of complex topics. So how fast you want to get a job? If you want to get a job super fast, then you can learn front-end and get a job in a couple months. Back-end requires a little bit more effort, but the starting salary is a little bit higher. And after a certain point, once you are experienced, if you are good at either one of these, you can make pretty much high amount of salary. So go learn AWS in full force, and whether you choose front-end, back-end, or something not related to front-end and back-end, such as DevOps, uh, solutions architect, infrastructure architect, you can use all the knowledge learned in this course. All right, folks, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye.